All right, guys, so this is a cardiology, cardiology farm and a biochem question. Uh, so let's see what you got today. All right, guys, it says, which of the following would be affected by the medication in phase two of the myocardial action uh, potential? Okay, so uh, there we go, phase two. And is it gonna be A, voltage-gated calcium channels opening? Is it B, voltage-gated sodium channels opening? Is it C, voltage-gated potassium channels opening? Uh, D, ligand-gated calcium channels opening? Or E, ligand-gated calcium channels opening? Now, you know, even without reading the question, I think if you were to go phase two, you better be jumping all over uh, what we did talk about in the, uh, in when we did the cardiac uh, lectures. But let's just read it for sake. Um, a 59-year-old man with hypertension is prescribed an antiarrhythmic that affects the flow of cations into the myocardial tissue. The image below labels the opening and closing of ion channels. Which of the following would be affected by the medication in phase two? Now, we know, okay, well, just as a brief review, uh, we know there that we have the pacemaker cell, okay? That's kind of the lub dub lub dub uh, kind of get, well, it, it, the pacemaker cell gets the heart kind of the, the tick, per se. Uh, and so it goes like this. It's more shaped like that. Now, if you see uh, where it goes up real quick, and then there's this long pause and goes down, then, you know, that's more the cardiac myocyte, okay? I would say cardiac myocyte. And you, know, you have to know the difference when you see the difference between the two. Now, we talked about in the pacemaker uh, cell, it's slow, kind of, a, kind of a slow in per se. So we use calcium. But anytime you see something going out, you know, it's it's going to be the uh, potassium. And I remember remember how we did those. We had the banana peel um, on the inside uh, because what starts on the inside and leaks and leaks out is what brings this thing down. Okay, so over here it's quick in, quick in. So what's quick? Sodium. Okay. And then at the top here, sodium closes, and then if it comes down, who's leaking out? Potassium. And then right here, there seems to be a balance, right? There's a balance. Something is going out, and something is coming in. That creates this, because we need the heart. The heart needs time to fill, right? Fill. It just can't squeeze, 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 squeeze. It needs time to fill and then pump, okay? And then it goes down, okay? And when it goes down, we always think potassium goes out. So... Typically, they're going to ask you a question here, unless, but you got to, you just flat out got to know. Look, when anything goes down, think potassium. The only difference is between the, these two basically is like when it goes up fast, it's sodium. When it goes up um, uh, slow, it's going to be calcium in the pacemaker. And if you notice on those videos that I did, I always put that lightning bolt, and there's a reason because when we're here, we're dealing with voltage gated. Okay, we're not dealing with ligand gated, and it, we talk about that in the pharmacology uh, videos. So we're just dealing with these guys. So in phase two, there's a balance, but when in doubt, because you could, and let's just get rid of it. We know it's not, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, got, got, I got, got, got distracted on that. We know out of these two, it's not sodium, because sodium's not not dealing with this with that right there. Um, so is it gonna be the voltage-gated calcium channels opening, or is it gonna be the voltage-gated potassium channels opening? Well, I know you're like, well, wait a second. You just told me that it's it's kind of a balance, right? Potassium out, calcium in. But technically, what's the the, the question that they'll always ask is what creates this? If technically, it's a balance between the two, because if it was more one more than another, then it would go in one direction. But it's it's a it's a steady, so it's actually a balance. But what caused this plateau is when the voltage gated calcium channels um, open, which is going to be A. Sorry about that confusion earlier. Okay, the potassium channels actually, they opened right here and started leaking out, and it wasn't until the, the calcium opened that created the balance. So technically during this, it's both of them. But which one, which one is, is the one that they're gonna test you on? They want, you, they want to know that it's the voltage gate of calcium channels that help create that plateau in phase two. So answer choice A. But you gotta know this, guys, and rewatch that a cardiac video if you have trouble with this and and you know again we use the banana peel and then we used what a salt shaker um uh yeah what was it salt shaker and then a bone or something you know and stuff like that so anyways all right this one reads a three-year-old girl whose parents immigrated to america is brought to the clinic due to seizures okay so we got a three-year-old seizures uh she, immigrant uh so the chances are there was no screening test done 
Little is known about the family history due to language barrier. The girl shows marked mental retardation and has a moldy, damp smell. Okay, I'm just trying to confuse you there. Of course, I'm trying to pick a different word for mousy. The physician diagnoses her, her with tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency, right? Kind of a giveaway, all right? Mousy, we're, all we're thinking is what, right? PKU. So then there's two, and we, what we said though, there's two t issues with PKU as far as what can cause them. It could be the, your, your classic phenylalanine uh, hydroxylase deficiency. And again, if it's an enzyme deficiency, we always default to autosomal recessive. Or it can be the tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency, uh, tetra, um, hydrobiopterin, bi, tetrahydrobiopterin. Um, I don't know why I'm going with that. I must have wrote that wrong. Anyways, it's a diet, you know, it's the biopterin. I'm going to forget that tetra thing. Uh, yeah, so tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency secondary to the um, dihydrobiopterin reductase. Okay, that's, that's really what I mean. Which of the following would be the dietary recommendation? So here's kind of a step, there's a step one element in here, and step two is well, what do you do? Okay. So... Um, is it low tyrosine in the diet? Well, we know, you know, again, phenylalanine makes tyrosine, um, which makes um, L-DOPA, or we can go that way. And the biopterin uh, issue affects here and here. But what's the, you know, what's the problem? Um, what's the, really the problem with this? We, can, we can't have buildup of phenylalanine, okay? Can't have that because that's what's lingering around. There's more of that. It causes the seizures uh, and, and, and stuff and the mental, mental retardation. So is it a low uh, tyrosine diet? Well, wait a second. If we're not doing this, we need tyrosine to keep going in these directions. So I don't know if it's a low tyrosine diet. Uh, it might go in the other direction, okay? So it might be more of a high tyrosine diet. So we know it's not a. A diet rich in phenylalanine? Whoa, 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 wait a second, man. He's our problem in the first place. So, you know, don't get bogged down on that. Know, know with confidence that we need low phenylalanine. Is it ketogenic diet? Well, we talked about ketogenic diet. Now, a ketogenic diet can decrease seizures in kids. No, there's no doubt about that. So, um, so that's kind of on my differential. Now, if I were to say which amino acids are exclusively ketogenic, what are you going to say? Lysine and leucine. We talked about that in the biochem video. Uh, so I'm going to keep this one kind of out there. Is it a high protein diet with raisins as a supplement? Well, if I have a high protein diet, that's going to give me a lot of phenylalanine because that's where we get that from in our diet. And raisins, ironically, are high in phenylalanine too. I don't see them testing you on that, but that was just something I wanted to add in there. So it's not. we don't really want a high protein diet. We want a more of a, a low protein diet. Um, which leads us to answer choice E, low-protein diet. So now I'm between low-protein diet versus a ketogenic diet. And we should know if we had to choose between these, and this is kind of a relatively tough choice because you could say, well, look, I know that ketogenic decreases seizures in kids, yes, but not for the purposes of treating PKU. If I'm have it, the, for the dietary, recommend, the dietary recommendation isn't to go on a ketogenic diet. It's going to be uh, a low-protein diet. Okay, so you got to know the difference. Uh, but the key with this ketogenic, no leucine and lysine, um, and that's more of a, a, a biochemistry as well as we're in the Krebs. We talked about that kind of diet. But for the purposes of this one, we're going to go with low-protein diet and just know the pathway, guys. So hope it's helpful.